you're going to start off with some basic identities. And so the idea behind an identity is that we have to show that two things that don't immediately look the same are actually the same. So, for example, you might have seen this in rational expressions. And they would say something like, well, actually, this is the same as x minus 1. Now, we know what we can do. We can show our work here and factor like x plus 1, x minus 1 on top. And have the x plus 1 downstairs. And then these would cancel out, which would mean that it's actually x minus 1. And so that is an example of an identity here. We're basically showing the right side can come from the left side. Um, and except for these, these places where you're dividing by 0, um, they're identical in every way. Okay, so the basic identities that we have are, well, 1 over sine of theta. But we know this already. 1 over sine theta is cosecant of theta. And the one that's paired with cosine is secant of theta. And then 1 over tangent equals cotangent of theta. But we knew this already. This is the Sokotoa Chochakao, or it's just the reciprocal pairs. Um, another thing, because tangent of theta is sine over cosine, whenever you see a cotangent, you can always rewrite it as cotangent of theta all over sine of theta. So these are some of the things we know already. And this is where you begin simplifying and doing identities. So, for example, um, in the beginning, they're not going to ask you to do identities. What they're going to ask you to do is to just simplify. So they might give you something like tangent of theta and cosine of theta. And then their command is just simplify it. So when you simplify, the first thing you should do is change everything into sines and cosines. That is one of the strategies, the easiest strategy. So we're going to write the tangent as sine over cosine, and cosine is already there. When we think of it this way, we can see that these will be canceling out, and so actually it's the same as just sine theta. And so we have a simplification from tan theta, cosine theta, to sine theta. So that's just an easy, um, quick example. Another example might be like secant of theta all over tan of theta. So our strategy today is to rewrite in terms of sine and cosine. We are going to have secant be written as 1 over cosine of theta, and then tangent will be sine of theta all over cosine of theta. We have a compound fraction now. So now that we've written it that way, we can do the keep switch flip. We keep 1 over cosine of theta, we change it to multiplication, and then we multiply by the reciprocal of the downstairs. So instead of sine over cosine, you're going to multiply by cosine of theta all over sine of theta. All right, and then you guys can see that the cosines are going to cancel. So we have 1 over sine theta, and 1 over sine theta you could simply write as cosecant theta. And so instead of this, we would write cosecant of theta. That's the simplified form. Okay, so along with these basic identities, we have something called the Pythagorean identities. Let me write that out here. All right. <clears throat> so you have this corner of the unit circle. And we've talked about how we have a right triangle if you pick any point along that circle. You have a right triangle by dropping an altitude down like that. And that turns out to be a right triangle. Um, it's a unit circle. So the height here is 1, the width all the way across is 1. And that means no matter which spot we pick on the circle, it's always going to be 1 is a hypotenuse. Um, and then cosine is actually defined as the width, if I rotate theta degrees, it's the x value or the width. And so, on the other side, this is how sine is defined. Okay, and now if you look at that, we have a Pythagorean theorem going on there. It's a right triangle. So a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 
you square the legs and they their sum should be the hypotenuse squared okay so what this means is no matter what theta I give you if you do sine squared of that theta plus cosine squared of that theta it will always be one and this happens all the time um, just some some technicalities here we're actually going to be writing this as sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one so the reason for that is I'll go over here in the green if I just write sine of theta squared I have some issues I don't know if they mean I should do sine of theta and then squared, or if I should do sine of theta squared so I don't know if I should be squaring the whole thing or just the angle that I'm given and so instead of always having to write the parentheses around here if you see sine squared theta that means that you're squaring the sine theta so you're not squaring the angle you're squaring the whole thing and so that's what it is right here okay so for an example of where you would see this um, sine cubed of x all right, I should fix that three plus sine of x cosine squared of x so they give you this and their command would be to just simplify so I'm looking for this basically in this example um, in this expression I can actually factor out a sign there's three signs here and one sign there so I could take one from each of those I'll write sine of x out in the front. Now what would be left over if I took out one sine? I would have a sine squared here, x, and I'd have a cosine squared x right there. And we just learned sine squared plus cosine squared is the same as 1. So really this entire ugly expression simplifies down to sine of x. So be on the lookout for this. You're going to see this a lot in identities, and it will make things a lot easier for you. Okay, now I just said Pythagorean identities, plural, right? So there are two other identities, but um, they both come from the main one that we just learned. So I'm going to show you another one. Um, the, the way that we get there is we divide everything here by sine squared. So I'm going to take this, divide all the way across. <clears throat> now look at these individually. Sine squared over sine squared is just 1. Now cosine over sine is cotangent. And since they're both squared, this would be cotangent squared equals 1 over sine squared is the same as cosecant squared. All right, so you're going to see this a lot too, and you might see it in a different version. If I rewrite this in a proof, you might see this side, and then you could just replace it with a cotangent squared. So be aware, and this is technically the one that you'll see in most textbooks, but you can always rearrange these. Um, so what you should be looking for are anything that's being squared, like sine squared, cosine squared, um, cotangent squared or cosecant squared means you would use this and there's another one here so instead of dividing by sine squared everywhere let's divide by cosine squared everywhere all right so what that gives us is this is tan squared plus one equals secant squared all right so what I tell my students is don't um, remember that these exist but don't always memorize these identities if you have the main sine squared plus cosine squared equals one you could just divide everything by sine squared or divide everything by cosine squared to figure it out again because in calculus when you really use these a lot um, you may not remember them, so just remember the main one and remember that you can get the other two by just dividing. Okay, so one last example here. 
that may use the new versions. Need to write sine theta, cosine squared theta, cosecant theta. All right, so we have a lot going on here. First strategy you can always do is write everything in terms of sine and cosine. So if I was to rewrite this, I would have a cos squared and then a 1 over sine theta plus sine theta. And now the second thing I'm going to do is I have a sine out front that I can distribute into my parentheses. But if I distribute it, that sine is going to cancel with this 1 over sine. And so I'm just left with cosine squared of theta. And sine times sine then, distributing over there, is sine squared theta. And this turns out to be just 1. So this is a weird identity. No matter what angle I give you, if you're calculating this stuff right here, it will always turn out to be 1. Okay. And that's really nice because when you see identities like this, you don't want to keep working with this when you're trying to simplify things. You want, you want to end up with a 1. Okay, I guess that did not have a tan squared or a secant squared or a cotangent or a cosecant, but um, as you guys practice this, I think you guys will kind of get the groove of it.